Hello, my name is Carl. Welcome to my workshop and welcome to my YouTube channel. So this is it. This is going to be Harrison Mill Resto Part 8. And in this episode, we are going to put a 5 TPI Acme thread into the bronze uh, blank that we made in the last video. So without further ado, let's get on and let's do it. Well, people, this is it. We're ready to go. Um, I'm going to do a fairly sort of noddy checklist here, which is really for my own sanity. And um, I'm going to show you a couple of things. Um, so we have got the gearbox set to L2, which is where we want it to be for 5 TPI, given that we've got the 63 tooth gear engaged. The, uh, the top slide is set over to 14.5 degrees. I'll see if I can show you that, actually, if I can zoom in on it. You can just about make out the, the index line there. So that's 14.5 degrees. Apologies for the handheld shakiness. It's the best way for me to show you it. The, um, the half nut is engaged and will remain engaged throughout the threading operation. The tool is uh, on centre height and is square to the work. We've got our dial gauge set up to uh, indicate the um, the top slide movement in a direct reading fashion as we've spoken about before. DRO x-axis is set to zero as well as a, a secondary um, means of security of knowing where we are. So everything is basically now ready to go. So what I'm going to be doing here is as we did with the Delrin test nuts the sequence of operations is to put the cut on using the top slide. This has actually been touched off as well inside the bore. So cut on using the top slide, take a cut through, stop using the rapid stop and reverse switch, then one full turn out on the cross slide, reverse the tool out of the work, then stop, then one full turn back in, then some more cut, and then off we go again. Now, I was taking 10th hour at a time on that Delrin, which, you know, it's easy to do on that type of material. I won't be doing that on the, uh, on the bronze. I'm going to start off with a cut of 2.5 thou and see um, where that, uh, what that does for us. One of the primary things that I'm concerned about in this scenario is uh, chip evacuation. Um, you saw what those chips were like from the bronze granular and um, quite, quite uh, they tend to spray everywhere basically. And um, what I don't want is one of them getting wedged in the cut because that'll be the end of it all. That, that's just going to cause a lot of damage. So I am going to be using some, uh, or the, the possibility exists, let's just say, for the use of lubrication um, and coolant. We'll see uh, if that aids with chip evacuation. We'll see what happens because that could just make an unholy um, mess of, um, uh, you know, just granular chips uh, in lubricant just swimming around inside there. Um, so we'll see how we get on with it dry to begin with and um, what the effect is. So um, without further ado then, we'll get, I'll get the camera set up so you can see what I'm doing and, uh, and we'll have a go at this. What I should also have said as well is that I'm going to be taking some spring cuts. Um, now, I didn't do that in the Delrin because it's very soft. Um, so I, I wouldn't have thought that the boring bar would have flexed, or the threading bar rather, would have flexed very much at all, uh, if at all. Um, but um, I think it will in the bronze. So every second cut, I'll be taking a spring cut. And we'll do that until we get to the, um, the acknowledged depth of 0.11. I think we'll probably have to go the extra um, five thou as well, which I think, yeah, I think we'll just do that as a matter of course anyway. Um, it, we, we, prove, we proved that in the Delrin that we needed to do that, so we'll just go for it. Okay, so uh, let's get on. Right, well, I've got the camera set up. I'm zoomed in, looking at the bore. So um, you're going to get a good view of it. Hopefully it stays in focus. So I'm going to put a cut on now of 2.5 thou. 
which I've now done on the uh, on the clock. So we'll start the machine. And we'll take the first cut. Yeah, it's definitely putting a thread in there. Now I know that I've got enough clearance to get this out the other side. As soon as I hear it stop cutting, I'm going to stop the machine, which is there. So let's take it out one turn. And reverse out. Go a little bit faster on the reverse pass. Not pass, but the reversing. It's not a threading pass. So the looks of the swarf in there, I don't know if you can see it, I'm going to have a look in a minute and see what you can actually see. I think I might just give that a blast with compressed air, just to clear that each time. Okay, and we'll stop there. Take it back in, that one turn. Put on another 2.5 thou of cut. Right, let me just get the airline and blow that out. Let me, before I do that, I want to see what you can see. Yeah, you've still got a good view there, so I'm going to blow with the airline that swarf out of there to keep it, keep it clear. I think the worst thing I could probably do is use lubricant, use coolant, because it's going to just cause a big conglomeration in there that I'm not going to be able to get out. So we'll slow the machine down a little bit. I put another 2.5 thou on. So um, here we go. Probably seems like I'm being fairly pedestrian with this, but um, I just want to take it steady. there okay so out one turn and reverse it in that one turn another 2.5 thou of cut and I'll just blow that out right let's give it some lube this time. What we're going to be using is um, Illicut 486 mixed with uh, Rocol. That's my usual, um, if there was any in it, let's try something else. There we go. Right, let's give that a go, see how we get on. Right. 
Right. In we go. After this one, we'll do a spring pass. Right, back in that one turn. And a spring pass. Seems to be okay. Stop there. Out one turn. Back out again. in that one turn two and a half thou of cut let's give it a blow let me just check what your view is right You've got a pretty good view. We'll do one more cut with you on that view and we'll move you. We'll move you. Right. Okay, in we go. So you're on the tripod now, so hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Um, so I've just put another 2.5 thou of cut on, as I said before I moved you. Um, so we'll uh, we'll put it through. As soon as we hear that stop cutting, we stop. turn out 
and we reverse. One full turn back in. Give it a blow. Another 2.5 thou of cut. Some lube. And we're away again. Turn out. To there. And reverse it. out, we'll stop there, take that full turn back in, which is there, let's give this a clean, and some lube, do a spring pass this time. Okay, so can we go That's about 20 RPM. Maximum here is 40 on this setting on the gearbox, which is A2. But I'm um, just controlling it using the VFD as well. My old ticker can't stand going too fast when I'm throwing. Right. Stop it there. One full turn back out. Reverse it. It's definitely got swap on it, so looks like these are needed. Right, let's take it back in that full turn. Which is there. Another 2.5 thou of cut. I think I might be being overly conservative here, but, um, you know, I'd much rather. Okay, so, let's go. Put my head right in your road. turn 
out, reverse it. turn in and another 2.5 thou of cut clean it up some lube And in we go. turn out and reverse it. One full turn back in. Clean. Another 2.5 thou of cut. Some lube. Right, I'm going to continue in this vein until we get um, to the uh, to the design thread depth, and I'll bring you back um, because it's not very interesting. It's not exactly a spectator sport watching what I'm doing here, so. I'll bring you back when we're a bit nearer. So you join me as we take the final spring pass. I've gone to 0.11 inches um, as specified and I've taken the extra 5 thou like we did with the Delrin. These spring passes um, have been taken every second cut and they've been proving quite useful and, and definitely uh, necessary because towards the end of the um, of depthing the thread I've actually been able to see about five tenths of a thou of spring reading on the uh, on the DTI on the clock gauge. So um, they've definitely been uh, worthwhile. So here we go with the final spring pass. Okay, so we'll back that out one turn. So in theory now, that should be us. So I'm going to reverse the um, saddle all the way out now. And we'll, um, we'll try the lead screw, the knee, lead, knee lead screw in, and we'll see where we're at. Um, hopefully it's going to be good. Right, so here it is. I'll let you have a close-up view of it. Um, the finished item. Not quite finished yet, because we still have to um, put a hole in this for the lubrication fitting um, to communi communicate with the uh, internal thread. And also, we need to um, um, basically put a spot face in this for the anti-rotation grub screw to locate into once this is uh, fitted into the um, the cast iron nut housing which will be the next thing that we'll make 
um, but that shouldn't be too difficult. We can do that in almost in in situ once it's in the uh, in the nut housing. Slight burring here, but uh, nothing to write home about. I can soon sort that out. Um, it's the sort of thing that you'd expect to find anywhere, and the same on the back. I'll show you the um, try and show you what the threads like inside there, if I can. Um, so it looks nice. Um, there's a little bit of debris just at the front there, the furthest away from the camera, um, just from it having the nut, uh, having the screw put through it rather. But it's a nice thread. It looks good. Um, all the experiments and the R and D with the Delrin all proved uh, proved its worth today. So uh, I am very happy with the with sorry with the uh, <laughs> bump the camera. I'm very happy with uh, the end result of that. So I'll put this onto the the screw now and uh, show you uh, show you what it's like. So there we are, folks. That is as good as I could possibly have hoped for. It's just exactly the fit that I wanted, and um, it's come out really well. I'm really really happy with it. Um, so the next thing to do now is to manufacture the uh, the nut housing from a cast iron for this to fit into. We've also got to do some other work on this as well as I've mentioned, just um, put some uh, holes in it for uh, the lubrication fitting and also for the, um, the anti-rotation grub screw that uh, goes through the, the nut housing, but we'll do that in due course. But um, the way things stand at the moment, I am a very happy man with uh, what we've produced here today. So that's it for me today. Um, bit of a shorter one for you this time. But, um, you know, it was uh, the, the, the ultimate um, uh, result, really. It worked perfectly, uh, and I'm really pleased about it. Um, I hope I haven't bored you too much with it. There's really not, it's not exactly a spectator sport, is it? And uh, cutting a thread in a piece of bronze. And you've seen it all before with the Delrin anyway, so I hope it held some, uh, some interest for you anyway. Well, I don't know what I've done right, really, because since the last video that I made of manufacturing the, uh, the bush or the, um, the, the blank rather, I should say, it went a bit berserk. I had uh, over a thousand views of that film in 24 hours. I had in excess of 30 new subscribers in 24 hours and about 55 likes, which I know for the big channels is probably nothing, but for, a, you know, for this benighted corner of YouTube, I think it's amazing. Um, so for each and every one of those new subscribers, I'd like to give you a massive welcome to the channel and uh, thank you so much for subscribing to me and for following me on this um, journey, as we call it. Everyone has a journey now, don't they, of, uh, of doing the, uh, the, the refurbishing of the uh, milling machine. And um, I really hope you're going to enjoy the stuff that we're going to have coming up in the future. I've got some really good ideas for other projects as well that I want to do here. Now. I'd like to end with a couple of recommendations. First of all, um, Retro Mechanica, who is my brother Dean, he has an excellent channel uh, where he does machining and engineering in his workshop at home, all based around the, um, the, the, the rebuild and refurbish of BSA Bantam motorcycles. And that's an excellent channel. My brother is a superb engineer and really worth watching. Um, it's, uh, he's far more entertaining than I am as well, so you'll, you'll enjoy it. The next person I want to tell you about is a gentleman from uh, the United States uh, called Dale Swager. He also has an excellent workshop and is a very skilled, very talented man. And he, he, uh, he's motorcycle based as well. He mainly um, centers around Japanese motorcycles, so Suzuki's, Yamaha's, the type of motorcycle actually that, that we would be familiar with in this country as well. They're not just uh, things you would find in the United States. So give him a look as well. He's excellent. Um, I really enjoy watching his videos and I always learn a lot. So uh, anyway, with that, I hope you've, uh, you've enjoyed this and perhaps learned something uh, or at least had a good laugh at me trying to <laughs> cut a thread in that bronze. So I will see you on the next video. Take care of yourselves.